I'm standing in front of the local Urban League office here in Alexandria, Virginia. Long before it was a civil rights office, it was a slave holding pen until the early 1860s, and it was one of the best known in the United States. Here is where we talk about spirituals. Those Christian hymns taught to every enslaved man, woman, and child as part of their new religion in America. Slavery was highly abusive and ripped families apart. So it's not surprising that enslaved people used spirituals to comfort themselves, and they transformed those songs to plan rebellions. And finally, they used spirituals to plot their escape to freedom via the Underground Railroad. After slavery was outlawed in 1865, African Americans started to rebuild their lives. Schools were built, businesses started, political careers attempted. By the start of the 20th century, all of the U.S. was dancing to ragtime. The invention of one Scott Joplin, a composer and pianist who fought against criticism that music rooted in African rhythms was uncivilized. Eventually, there was the blues and the first incarnation of jazz in the 1920s and 1930. Welcome to the world famous U Street in Washington, D.C. Once upon a time, it was Black Broadway. That's because musicians of all stripes gathered here in the 30s, 40s, and 50s and performed jazz, turning it into what some call America's classical music. A lot of jazz musicians, because they go to play, would go to environments where they were totally unaccepted unless they were on the bandstand. But these folks would do it anyway because they could not not do something that they were fueled to do this. That serves an example to, to everyone. With the civil rights movements of the 1950s, 60s, and 70s, life in the U.S. was tense. The added uproar over the U.S. war in Vietnam only added to the stress. While some African-American musicians responded with protest songs, many others mixed politics with the need to dance it out to a funky beat. To each is reach, and if I don't come... Hey, DMV, is showtime! Funk's child, it might be said, was born in the late 1970s. Rap, or hip-hop. A mixture of pop, political awareness, and bravado, focused on the spoken word, a reflection of the concerns of millions of young African Americans making their way in the U.S. and around the world. This is a form of music that has saved, literally saved lives. Um, so now to have a museum that's going to put that on Front Street, as we say in hip hop, they're going to put that on Front Street and now we can now showcase to the world that this is more than just some form of music. This is a culture of people that were saved because of this form of music. We all be all right, we all be Already, Protesters against police brutality have adopted this song, All Right, by Kendrick Lamar, as their anthem at a time of heightened racial tensions in the U.S. We gonna be all right. 